I arrived in Philadelphia and to this campus uh, in 1970. At that time, the American Oncologic Hospital uh, had been open for approximately three or four years. It was mostly a surgical hospital uh, and a, a place where patients came to die. There wasn't any science really to speak of on the clinical side or even in the translational side that brings the research from the laboratory to the clinic. Fortunately, all of that has changed. Fox Chase has been extraordinarily uh, fortunate to have uh, four uh, individuals who, in essence, have helped Fox Chase change from this hospice to this modern, uh, state-of-the-art cancer center uh, that consistently ranks among the best in the United States. The paid senior leadership's job is to sort of split their time between looking multiple years down the road and figuring out the nuts and bolts of running an institution from day to day or year to year. The board, on the other hand, should spend 70 or 80 percent of their time worrying about the long-term stewardship of an institution. All the board members make tremendous contributions, but there is a subset of the board. They are actually the institution. I don't know if you know, but his father was, uh, was one of the principal surgeons at the American Oncologic Hospital when it was in West Philadelphia. He was a sort of, I think he was a head neck surgeon. And Maury used to round with him every now and then. He was the chairman of Philadelphia National Bank, which was respected as the, the best bank in the city of Philadelphia. I've come in contact with an awful lot of bankers over my career. Uh, we deal with banks all the time, and he, he was the best banker I ever met. Maury has been part of the institution for over 50 years. He saw that there was a need to couple research with patient care. And it was Maury's leadership and vision that allowed these two institutions uh, to work together and become the Fox Chase Cancer Center. I met Maury Dorrance back in 2010 when I moved to Fox Chase, and I was impressed from his past uh, vision and current vision of cancer research, he had uh, clearly understood that we need to combine clinical uh, care to basic research. And this is the basis of modern translational medicine. Maury often talks about how are we protecting the Fox Chase legacy and the Fox Chase brand and Fox Chase's position in Philadelphia. I want to see this institution grow more with better research and better treatment. I think the opportunity to try and prevent cancer, cure cancer, it's an awful burden, and we've done some marvelous things with it. Well, this is Mr. Roach that I love. <laughs> Ed Roach is a fixture at Fox Chase. He's been there, uh, I think, since like 1951 or something like that, which is unbelievable. He brings the history of the center and helps us stay focused on our original mission at the same time knowing that we have to change how we implement that mission. His personal history, which he shared a little bit with me, you know, you would think that would make someone run away from a place like Fox Chase, but he never ran away from it, no matter how much sadness came into his life. I myself have lost a wife and a daughter to cancer. They were both patients here, but that's not why I was involved. I was involved before that happened. But that adds to my interest. Ed Roach, to me, is the consummate uh, caretaker. Ed Roach has contributed to more board meetings and more board committee meetings uh, than anyone ever. I'm on every committee, I think, except one. <laughs> He's got the most kind heart, and he listens very, very carefully to what you say. Ed Roach thoroughly reads all of the documents. If he says they're okay, they're okay. That's my training, I think. <laughs> I was in public accounting for many years. He's the ideal volunteer. You know, board of director, 
They're members, they're volunteers though. He is the epitome in every way, shape, and form of a volunteer. It's part of my life. It's what I do. I go to Fox Chains. <laughs> Phil brought the perspective of a corporate structure. Phil Lippincott was the head of uh, Campbell Soup and was on the Scott Paper Board. We have wonderful scientists and physicians, but our expertise is not in business, it's not in management, it's not in investment, it's not in necessarily in strategic planning from a business or a financial standpoint. So I think the marriage of people with the expertise that Phil has with the science and boldness that the scientists have here is a wonderful combination to take us to the future. Fox Chase has always had its own unique culture and its own unique level of passion and enthusiasm. If you go back to the mission of Fox Chase, I, I think the hope is that that mission will become much more of a reality. In just my father's side of the family, four generations, we've lost nine people to cancer including two younger sisters, and my wife is also uh, in remission. So there's a very strong emotional attachment to coming up with a, something that will move us in a very positive direction. Phil really talks from a wonderful vantage point of honoring the people who work in the institution. Well, it's a doddering old man. I mean, I am always very much attracted to young, exciting talent. Phil will usually say something like, you know, well, Mike, that's a very good idea, and I'm, you know, perhaps I'm too old to have anything useful to say anymore. And at that point, you know, he's about to give you a real gem. Ken really established not only my endowed chair and the entire human genetics program, but uh, even in the mid-1990s, he was responsible for first bringing molecular diagnostics to Fox Chase. Ken comes from pharmaceutical science and, develop and drug development. I've seen Fox Chase from the point of view of a company that uh, supplied drugs, that sponsored clinical trials. I've seen it from the point of view of the board of directors and uh, governance, uh, how the institution works but I've seen it from the point of view of a patient. Fox Chase was just a wonderful place to be. You felt as if pe people were really invested in uh, getting the best possible outcome for you. They were truly concerned about you. He is strongly committed to helping to improve therapies for patients. He's very thoughtful about sort of putting the big picture strategically in the appropriate context. That's what makes a good board member, and that's what makes him a good board member, in that it's not just um, advisory, um, it's asking the right questions. How do clinical trials uh, help not only the companies that are uh, the inventors of the drugs and are looking for uh, clinical support, but what is the responsibility on the other side? How does it benefit an institution like Fox Chase to work in partnership with a pharmaceutical or a biotech company? Having the connection to pharmaceuticals really has a little bit of a different insight than a regular businessman as to what the mission is at a cancer center. They've been a tremendous bedrock for the institution. They've also been a bedrock for the other board members. I look up to all of them. They've been role models for everyone that they've ever touched throughout their lives. 150 years between the four of them, they've seen the institution during great times and, and difficult times. They have that perspective of when things are going well to kind of remind you that, okay, don't get too, don't get too full of yourself. And when things are going tough to sort of remind you that, you know, this too will pass. They're all the kind of people who you'd want to be your uncle, your next door neighbor. They're people you'd want to be your friends.